Hello and welcome to another fizzing, informative and jolly episode of the Fully Charged Show, Almost Breaking News. Coming up, hydrogen is the answer, but what is the question? Rivian and Mercedes to build electric vans together in Europe? Cheaper wind turbine generators with no rare earth metals? 67% of new generating capacity in the United States of America is now renewables. Bad news, big price hikes in the UK on the rapid charger network. But to balance out that negativity, some quirky quantum breakthroughs in battery technology. And what is the secret weapon to fight climate change? But before we get into that, here's a very brief update of some exciting things coming up. Now, first of all, you will notice that Almost Breaking News is now on the Fully Charged Show's sister channel, the Everything Electric Show. The Fully Charged podcast can be found here too. But what's especially exciting is that this channel is undergoing the mother of all renovations. And very soon, it will also be the home of our home energy content with oodles of organic goodness from October onwards we've unearthed another great presenter, Emily, an actual renewable energy professional to help present these episodes with me. And you can expect oodles more organic goodness from October onwards. So if you haven't done already, please subscribe to the Everything Electric show too. Meanwhile, our fully charged live festivals of electrification are shaping up to be quite something in 2023. We saw almost 40,000 attendees over three events in 2022. And we are aiming to get a combined total of 100,000 attendees across all six events in 2023. So next up is our Australia show in Sydney in March. And we are inviting all potential speakers, sponsors, exhibitors and media partners to get in touch to take part as soon as possible. Tickets to that and other fully charged live events are all available online at fullycharged.live. So stay tuned for some really exciting announcements about next year's Fully Charged Awards as well, including the location, the venue, the dates and the categories. And we think that a Consumer Choice Awards, as voted on by tens of thousands of electric vehicle owners, can inspire even more people to stop burning stuff. Not least the car companies. OK, now back to the news. But, but just before we start... One more little thing. It's a, it's a silly observation, but the cosmetics company L'Oreal have launched a men's wash bag range of nice smelly products for chaps called Fully Charged. And they've used exactly the same font and layout as the globally recognized Fully Charged show. So for a bit of a laugh, this is now the L'Oreal almost breaking news show because we're worth it. Not sponsored by L'Oreal, but we may use their logo whenever we want. OK, now a proper actual news story. This is big news in the UK. Hydrogen. We have been told it will save everything. We can all stop worrying right now about foreign oil and gas and high prices for energy. Hydrogen is the total answer to everything. It will literally save the planet. It will never run out. It's perfect in every way possible. And anyone who is critical of this is a traitor, a doom monger, and is being paid directly by Putin. We just need to frack and use hydrogen. That is what our current environment minister is telling us. How delightful. So if you've been told by the people who fitted or service your gas boiler or the bloke at the pub or the bully on Twitter that hydrogen is the answer, I beg you to listen to a recent Fully Charged Show podcast where I talk to Professor David Seabon, who is a fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering and who is a founder of the Hydrogen Science Coalition. He explains in a calm, unemotional manner the critically important but very niche roles for hydrogen in the near future. And here's a spoiler. It will never be used to power a car or heat your home. Mercedes-Benz and Rivian are joining forces to produce electric vans at scale in Europe. They're going to be built in Europe. OK, that is a simple enough thing to understand. But what I find a bit intriguing about this story is that literally the oldest car maker in the world is teaming up with one of the very newest to make vehicles that use a different technology to the one Mercedes-Benz have been used churning out for the last 125 plus years, the internal combustion engine. I mean, Mercedes are really good at making those. They've also recently made some mighty fine electric cars. We've test driven them on the show. So you kind of assume with their budget, they could develop their own electric delivery vans. 
I mean, they've done a few experimental trucks, but what is apparent is the knowledge and tech advances made in the startup community leave the huge incumbent industries in the dust. The joint venture announced on Thursday will help each automaker scale its bespoke large-scale battery electric van business as Mercedes-Benz plans to phase out all combustion engine vans by 2025. Together, the companies plan to build and operate a factory in Europe that produces vans for both brands. Meanwhile, Rivian, which has a contract to supply Amazon with 100,000 electric delivery vans, if Rivian can make this work, it is just another example of what is to come in the next 10 to 20 years. Manufacturers' names that we're all familiar with will become mere ciphers of their present status. It's looking more and more like they cannot adapt fast enough. The internal resistance to the demise of the combustion engine is being fought with fanatic determination. It's obvious to all outside observers that this course of action is doomed. Now, this kind of technological advance is something that literally melts my soggy old brain. It's effectively a totally new way to generate electricity using the incredible resource of wind. If this technology gets adapted and can actually work as well as the inventors expect, it could radically increase the amount of turbines that could be produced and massively decrease the cost because it doesn't use the expensive metals currently needed by generators produced today. Researchers at the Sandia National Laboratories in the USA have developed a fundamentally new type of rotary electrical contact. I think that means a different kind of generator. Here's a clear-cut scientific explanation from yours truly. It's basically a series of baffling contra-rotating discs joined together by a twisty conductive belt thingy that goes around and around and makes loads of electrons that jostle each other down the wire and the electricity comes out the other end. Do I, get a gold, do I get a gold star for that? OK, look, the technology is called Twist Act, and it eliminates the need for expensive rare earth magnets, as I mentioned, in large wind turbines. Now, I've been staring at the illustration of how it works, and I think I may have started dribbling after a while. However, as with new battery chemistry, one of these new technologies we're seeing emerging in this global industrial revolution is going to actually work. It's going to have impacts we can barely imagine. The twist act really fascinates me, and I can't wait to find out more. This could be one of the success stories, or maybe not. Are we building new electricity generating capacity around the world? Yes, thankfully we are. In the UK, we are very busy installing massive offshore wind capacity, and we'll soon be expanding our onshore wind generating capacity thanks to a short, insecure, balding Russian bloke. We are also in the early stages of building a massive nuclear power plant at Hinkley Point C. OK, it's five years behind schedule and £12 billion pounds over budget. And the other two power plants built on the same lines are in France, which is now 12 years behind schedule, and in Finland, which was due to start generating in 2009. But it is now finally working, 13 years behind schedule. But in the USA, what generating technology is being installed faster than any other? Coal? Oil? Gas? Nuclear? No. It's renewables. A staggering 67% of new generating capacity in the USA was renewable, wind and solar. And why is this happening? Is it because of all the wealthy liberals on the US Northeast Coast whining on about saving the planet? No, it's plain and simple free market economics. Renewables are cheaper, far more reliable, faster to, in to install and produce more electricity for longer and with zero emissions with a greater return for investors. End of story. Get over it. While I'm on the topic of massive scale renewable development, here's a slightly bonkers but increasingly plausible project. The Sahara Desert in North Africa. Some of you may have heard of it. Well, large areas of Morocco are in a desert area, and those are very good locations for massive solar arrays, as we are discovering. There are already very big solar farms in Morocco, and it's looking like there will be soon a great deal more of them. Here's some solar facts about this amazing country, and yes, I have been there, and it is amazing. The shortest winter day still offers more than 10 hours of sunlight. Add to this fact that the Moroccan government has set up a solid legal framework to foster investments in the renewable energy field, including the bonkers project I mentioned earlier. So if you built solar and wind arrays that could produce 10.5 gigawatts, combine that with 20 gigawatt hours of battery storage and a quite long, very fat wire that followed the coast from Morocco, past Spain, Portugal, France and ended up in North Devon, 
Yes, a 3,800 kilometer undersea high voltage DC cable from Morocco to the UK, supplying three nuclear power plants worth of power, 20 hours a day, 365 days a year, enough to power 7 million homes. That is the plan. Now, some of the funding for this project is from Octopus Energy. And obviously, if stuff starts to take shape on this project, we will report further. But I think it's a very interesting move with a lot of support from across the globe and the political spectrum. So that's good. Next story. OK, this is three little stories in one. As I mentioned earlier, I love to cover weird new technology gubbins every now and then. And because one day, one of these strange discoveries or inventions is really going to take off. Which one? I have no idea. There are now so many breakthrough discoveries being made, one of them is bound to be commercially and environmentally a game changer. Today I'm talking quantum batteries. What the what? So quantum batteries use the identical weird properties of quantum mechanics that make next generation quantum computer systems attainable. Really? Is that true? I mean, I've heard so much about quantum computing, but I don't know if I've actually seen or even used anything that you could call a quantum computer. Anyway, this notion has been around for a while. Back in 2012, the concept of a quantum battery was first proposed in a paper entitled Extractable Work from Ensembles of Quantum Batteries. That was in 2012. It was theorized that quantum resources such as entanglement could be used to speed up the battery charging process by charging all the cells within the battery simultaneously. My brain is already literally melting. Scientists from the Institute of Basic Science in Korea and the University of Insurbia in Italy have apparently made the breakthrough by making use of quantum mechanical systems often known as the micromaser. What the what? What the hell is a micromaser? Oh my luck! Apparently, it is a system of injecting a stream of two level atoms into a superconducting cavity. I am dribbling. I need a tissue. The South Korean researchers have already calculated that quantum battery technology may reduce the time it takes to charge a car at home from around 10 hours to three minutes. Get out of here! And public rapid chargers the stations that they may totally recharge a car in 90 seconds. Like I say, one of these quirky developments in some obscure laboratory is going to transform our world. It's happened before, it'll happen again. And while we're on the topic of battery charging, a company called StoreDot have already started delivering a battery design that can add 100 miles of range to a car in five minutes of charging. So this is already happening, this is not theoretical. So this technology is really advancing rapidly and it's hard to keep tabs on it, but I'll do my best. The 100 in 5, as they're calling it, cells uh, that the battery startup have just begun delivering to car makers around the world are 30 amp hour silicon dominant anode lithium iron pouch cells. There you go. StoreDot asserts that its cell samples achieve 100 miles of range in five minutes consistently and without compromising the battery's health. A store dot aims to begin mass production of the battery cells in 2024. And the third little battery story, General Motors have gone into partnership with Canadian advanced battery recycling company Lithion Recycling to, and I quote their press release, work towards establishing a circular ecosystem for recycling EV batteries. May I just add an observation? Because this is great news, I love it. But 20 years ago, no automotive manufacturer, in fact, no company that made anything would ever use a term like circular economy. Pushing these gigantic material consuming juggernauts towards a slightly more environmentally aware mindset has been a major unforeseen achievement of the evolution of electric vehicles. So when someone says anything about batteries, as in, we have to dispose of them after three years, or they take too long to charge, they are literally, literally talking out of their back bottoms. And finally, let's finish on a rather suspect list of media articles. This is a collection of headlines suggesting secret weapons in the fight against climate change. The list is pathetic, tragic, desperate, but very effective. Flood the media with trivial garbage like this. Torrents of false claims, possible cures. It doesn't matter if the ideas are ridiculous or comical, barking mad or even faintly plausible. Meadows, tea bags, water heaters, middle schoolers, pollinators, humour, roof gardens, mothers. All of these and more are apparently secret weapons to combat 
climate change. And I've only just touched the surface. There are thousands of headlines like that. What is the one massive, overwhelming and smack you in the mouth obvious thing that is missing from this endless torrent of distraction? Fossil fuel. Here's the headline you will never see. Ending the use of fossil fuel is the only secret weapon against catastrophic climate change. You muppet. Anyway, that's it from this quantum episode of the Fully Charged Show. I just want to thank some of the super generous Patreon supporters who donate $10 or, or more a month to this show. Uh, I mean, we're grateful beyond measure for your support. And no matter the size, these, these folks have gone above and beyond. It's absolutely extraordinary. So they are Arlene Allen, Alex Sagenbrecht, Joe Nye, Marcus Wickborg, Jörg Holzer, James White, Fleming Eriksson, Lee Stringer, Tarka Dahl, Ambassador of the Vindaluvian Empire. It's, it's an in-joke, you don't need to know it. I think it's funny. Island Pony, Alex House, Daniel Radix, Sarah Gale Ross, Peter Davis, Guillaume Sagné, Chris Scott, Michael Weideboer, Edmund Skeppi, Anthony Woodhouse, and Arild Gear Skalvsin. Sorry, Arild, Arild, that's a hard one for me. That's a difficult one. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to shut up. That's, I've gone on long enough. Uh, yeah, subscribe. Uh, watch again. Tell your mates. That's it. If you have been, thank you for watching.